Hey guys, my name's Kyle Maddock, and before you watch this week's episode of Game of Thrones, make sure you check out our recap here of episode 1, Valor Do Harris, or however you want to pronounce your high Valerian. Season 3 doesn't waste a second and picks right up where Season 2 left off with Samwell Tarly, Westeros equivalent of Shaggy, being attacked by a white, only to be saved by g g g g ghosts. Wow, I am really bad at that. His own personal throat-ripping Scooby-Doo. Now, not enough to be savaged by a dire wolf, the ice zombie bursts into flames courtesy of Lord Commander Mormont, who immediately rips Sam a new one for not doing the one thing he's supposed to do, send the ravens. Were this any other medieval army, Sam would have been executed for his incompetence, but the other brothers of the Night Watch need Sam to remind them of just how good the rest of them have it. So, he's spared. After an always amazing title sequence featuring the new location of Astapor and a burned out Winterfell, we're back with Jon as he's taken by Rattleshirt and Egret and a bunch of other dirty hippies to New Wildlington to be put before the King Beyond the Wall. But not before watching a giant beat his wood uh, into the ground. <laughs> oh yeah, there's giants now. John immediately drops to his knees and swears fealty to Tormund Giantsbane, who John thinks is the king because he's tall. You know nothing, Jon Snow. After a little bit of bait and switch, John is introduced to Mance Raider, a former black brother and current king of a bunch of ice refugees. John immediately swears fealty to Mance, then leaves the tent and swears fealty to the door flap. In King's Landing, Podra totally cockblocks Bronn because Tyrion has sent him and he's short on um, patience. Tyrion, meanwhile, is in his room recovering from the Battle of the Blackwater, investigating his scars and staring at a reminder of just how horrible the world can be. Cersei has come to visit. She demands to know why Tyrion wants to talk to their father. Tyrion reminds her that their brother and sister, she forgets that from time to time. Somehow Tyrion manages to get a meeting with his dad and pitches him the idea of inheriting their castle, Casterly Rock, since it's rightfully his and all. Tywin responds with, we really like what you did with the Blackwater, but what if you got a good job and a better castle and a proper woman instead of a prostitute? Tyrion heads back to his room to address his dad's notes. Meanwhile, Sansa plays a game with Shay coming up with stories for each of the ships leaving the harbor. Shay doesn't want to play because the game is dumb. Littlefinger creeps up in his weird dress and tells Sansa to be patient that he'll totally get her to come with him when he leaves King's Landing. Shay and Roz have a super secret meeting 10 feet away. Elsewhere in King's Landing, King Joffrey's smart car gets held up when Marjorie, queen-to-be, stops to talk to some orphans. Joffrey gets mad at this because it's a thing and he's King Joffrey, worst of his name. At dinner, Marjorie tries to tell Cersei that the poor are just as important as the rich. Cersei nearly chokes in shock. Davos wakes up on a rock in the bay but is rescued by his friend Salador San, who says he's a pirate but doesn't have an eye patch or a parrot, so that's confusing. Salador tells him that Melisandre is burning dissenters alive at Dragonstone, so Davos immediately tries to get in on that action, but Stannis, being the softy that he is, just throws Davos in prison. Stannis' heart grows three sizes that day. Rob arrives at Winterfell, only to find it burned and tons of Stark men dead. Wait, what? That, that's Harrow? But Winterfell was on fire, so, uh, well, wherever Rob is, he throws his mom in jail for letting Jamie Lannister go. Ah, oh, there's a lot of imprisonment in this episode. It's gonna turn into Oz pretty soon. Roose Bolton tells Rob that they'll find Jamie soon and then resists the overwhelming urge to wink at the camera. Then comes the best stuff. Dragons. Daenerys sails to Astapor while her dragons go fishing in the Dothraki puke because they're on a boat. Jorah Mormont tells her that she needs to prove herself a leader and she secretly wonders if that means she'll have to puke too, but secretly hopes not because that's gross. Once they arrive in Astapor, Danny goes slave shopping, but feels weird about it. She meets a used slave salesman who tries to sell her thousand of Unsullied who are trained soldiers that have no balls and have to kill babies and get their nipples cut off and like it. Danny employs the tactical equivalent of kicking the tires, then walking away saying she'll think about it. As she leaves, a creepy little girl throws her a ball. 
just as an old guy is stalking her. Uh oh, Danny, run from the old guy towards the girl. Wait, no, the girl's ball is really a giant scorpion holder, and the old guy saves her. The old guy then reveals himself to be Barrist and Selmy, which we totally didn't see coming since uh, we randomly revisited the quitting scene from season one and the previously on before the show. Barristan pledges to be part of her Queen's Guard, and Jorah becomes jealous because now he has creepy old guy competition. Jamie and Brienne argue on their road trip because Jamie refuses to pull over and ask for directions. And, oh yeah, Arya. Hey guys, my name's Kyle Maddock. Thank you so much for watching this recap of Episode 1, Valor de O'Harris. Make sure you turn back next week for our Episode 2 recap.